Oh, things have quieted down for years since uh, Maid Laura learned that Walter, the fellow she was going to marry, was a crook, and that he had run out of her. They made Laura see she was lucky to have found out in time. She has put him out of her mind. Our scene now is the Ace's bungalow several evenings later. Mr. Ace has just received a phone call from his real estate partner, Mr. Neff. Jane and Marge sit nearby. Yes, Mr. Neff, how are you? What's on you? The new superintendent at the Tower Apartments? Oh, that's uh, Mr. Jackson. I put him on there about two or three weeks ago. Why? What's the... Who is he? What's the idea? Well, uh, this Mr. Jackson is a personable fellow. He has a nice way about him. Knows how to talk to people. You know, the swanky tenants who are half living at the Tower, and he needed a job, and... Well, no, I don't go around getting jobs with Eddie, Tom, Dick, and Harry, but... What do you mean, where did I find him? I didn't exactly find him. He was, uh, he was a bridge instructor and had a bridge school that closed it up and then... Now you see it all. What? Well, what's happened? What is it? What's about it? Well, Mr. Neff, if you'll kindly stop shouting and tell me if anything went wrong, I'll get in touch with Mr. Jackson and I'll... Fired? Who fired him? Fired him? But Mr. Neff, why did you do a thing like that? I thought he was doing a swell job out there. I mean... Well, job swindling your tenant. Uh, uh, what? Well, this is the first. Well, how did you find out? Of... Well, I'll go right out there and see what. A... Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Right away. Well, how do you like that? How do you do learn to talk on the phone so other people can understand what you're saying? How do you like that guy? Do you know what he's been doing? Every night he gets himself invited to different tennis departments and plays bridge with us. What? They complain to Neff about it. He's been taking them over, winning as high as 20 and $30 a night. Where's my hat and coat? That's gratitude for you. Well, who it? complained to Mr. Neff about it? Oh, he has some friends that live at this apartment building, and they thought they were being taken for a ride. I'm going right out there and see this, Jackson. But you said Mr. Neff hired him. He did, and I want to make sure he goes. I'll be back in about an hour. I'll see you later. I won't be very late. I'll get this thing fixed up in no time. Oh, well, drive carefully, dear. Yes, Jane. I'll drive carefully. Well, this is a better business, isn't it? I tell you, that's a fine mess, isn't it? I feel partly responsible for that. I kind of egged him on to give this exactly my job. I felt kind of sorry for him when his good school collapsed. Well, you didn't know he was going to do a thing like that. Well, no. What was it he was doing? I didn't get it. He's been playing bridge with the tenants at the Tower Apartments, and he's been winning a lot of money from them. That's bad, huh? Well, yes, I should think it is. Well, is it against the law to win a bridge? No, but this is different. Well, suppose he'd have lost. I guess that would have been all right, huh? No, Jane. It doesn't matter whether he wins or loses. Well, it does for him. He hasn't any money. He's only made a hundred a month out there. I mean, it's a matter of principle. After all, he's the superintendent of that apartment building. All he has to do is to look after the comfort of the tenants who live there. He's at their back and call. Well, maybe they back him. <laughs> what? Maybe they back him and call him to play with. <laughs> well, I doubt it, Jeff. <laughs> but even if they did, he shouldn't have played with him because, after all, he is a pro. So? Yes, he's a professional. And yes. if they didn't invite him to play and he wormed his way into their games, he's nothing but a con man. Con man? Yes, a confident man, a crook. Oh. Well, I hope you think it was now. It's so or con. <laughs> oh, I don't know, Jeff. Oh, well, I don't see what there's to laugh about. I feel sorry for him. He was so happy when he got that job. Well, he should have taken better care of it. I have no sympathy for anybody who hasn't any more gratitude than he displayed by swindling those tenants. Oh, don't say that, Marge. You don't know for sure he did that. That's what your husband just told us. Yes, I know. But are you going to believe what you hear, especially over a phone? Well, that's what Mr. Neff contends, and that's what the tenants out there are saying. Oh, those tenants. I wouldn't believe them on a stack of wheat cakes. They're just mad they lost. You know how some people are cheerful winners. Yes, I know. But this isn't a matter of winning or losing. Mr. Jackson is an ingrate. After you people did this thing for him, got him a job. When he was down and out, not a friend in the world. What? Oh, the phone. I'll answer it, Mark. How long is this to be now? Hello? What? I didn't understand. What program are we listening to? Oh, you mean on the radio? Oh, well, we haven't got our radio on. Why, is there something good on right now? Well, no, we haven't. Our radio is kind of out of order. Uh, do you think radio? Hello? Hello? 
Oh, at all. Well, who was it then? I don't know. When I was just so interesting, too. Somebody asked me what program we were listening to, and I said we didn't have... Oh, look, here's the desk. Uh, hello? No, Jane, that's the door. Hello? Jane, it's somebody at the door. The door? Oh, I thought it was the phone. Goodbye. <laughs> oh, no, I'm getting all mixed up here. Just a minute. I'll just the phones and the doors. I don't know if I'm going on horseback. Hello? Who is it? Mr. Jackson. Jackson? How do you do? I'd like to see your husband. My husband? I have something of the utmost importance to talk to her about. Well, come in, Mr. Jackson. Thank you. Come in. Mm. I just said you heard my friend talking about you. Oh, good evening. How do you do? Oh, uh, how do you do? Oh, you remember Miss Hale, Mr. Jackson. Yes, 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 of course. Mm-hmm. Quite something to you again. You'll pardon my barging in under this way, but something definitely awkward has happened, and I, I must speak to Miss Hale's wife. Well, you see, Miss Hale just ran off. Out? Oh, well. Well, he Mr. Mr. Race just got a call from Mr. Ness. Mr. Ness. He went out to the power apartment to see what was up. I uh, see. But I'm too late. Oh, you can't go late, Mr. Jackson. Sit down. No, thank you. I'll take it popping off, I guess. And I'll watch you hurry, Mr. Jackson. Mr. Race will be here in an hour. Won't you wait for him? No, no, I'm afraid not. I see I'm too late. I want to speak to him before they... I'm too late, Mr. Race. Like, for what? What is it? Well, I want to be telling that I'm resigning my position at the car. Resigning? Oh, you can't resign. It's the next day you fired you. Fired me? Mm-hmm. Willoughby Jackson, the second son of the second son? I beg your pardon, Mr. Davis. Yeah, that's all right. I just thought distinctly understood that nobody fired me. I resigned. But if that's the fact that you have to gentleman thinks that he can oh, fire me. Oh, that's just enough, I take it. Take it or not, he can't fire me. No. Jackson thought he was getting tough with me. Oh, I'm sorry. I've a feeling of temper. You'd be my own doing one of these days. Not to sleep in my temper. Not to sleep in my temper. Oh. There you are. Quite calm now. I, I beg your pardon. I forgive you. It's just that I've been frightfully upset, unjustly accused, hideously betrayed, and well, sad. Sad? I thought you said you weren't fired. Well, might as well take proof. I will. And for what? What have I done? I have told you nothing. But try to explain to your Mr. Ness. I find it. I saw you hit any younger man. I would have stood toe to toe and had it out with him. I'm quite dead to you ask Martin. You know, Martin, please do for all that. I wouldn't let him have it then and there. Overbearing, stop him, Jay. Oh, now, please, Mr. Jackson, don't worry yourself up with such a lavender. Now, mustn't lose your temper, you know. Well, that's not very much yet. I've got to tell you, Jay. I'm sorry. Well, I'm off. Off where? Where are you going? I don't know. What does it matter? I know, perhaps. China? Yes, I go back, I suppose. Well, where were you there before? Oh, yes, yes. Been all over it. Were you ever in Dresden, China? Dresden? Oh, did you ever ride those Ben Rickies? Riding them. I've wallowed in them. The cups just again. Oh, no. That's difficult. Before you um, hop off to China... What happened out there? This place tells us you were taking over the tenants of trade every night. They lied. I was invited on several occasions to make up a fourth of drink. I went against my will. I thought that I was much too good for them, but they insisted. I played and I won. They invited me again, said a lot of tenants became quite friendly. They invited me from time to time. I always won. It was always too easy. But they always insisted. I assure you I didn't care whether I played or not. Is that the gossip truth, Mr. Jackson? Absolutely. That is. That's what that means. So that's the way it was, huh? Absolutely. I give you my word of honor. They always invited you. Haven't they any friends? I suppose so, but they weren't available for bridge. Games were always arranged at the last minute. They had to have a talk. They called on me and I went. And you won. Of course I won. It's child's play. First I was a little hesitant about taking their money, but they wanted bridge, and without me there was no game. I don't see why Mr. Ness would have to that. But he wouldn't listen to me. I tried to explain. Oh, I just thought of something. Well, what? What is it, Jane? Oh, this is the most marvelous idea I ever had. Oh, Jane, what? Oh, let me sit down with you. Hey, it just came to me like a flash in the pan. Oh. Just now. But Mr. Jackson said they couldn't play unless they had a fourth, and he had to be the fourth. Hey, this is marvelous. Mr. Jackson. Yes, what is it? How would you like to start a fourth of bridge office? What's that? Well, what do you mean, Jay? Well, it's a place where if somebody wants to call somebody for a fourth of bridge, they call us and we send them somebody to play. It's like a transport service, only instead of escorting, they play bridge. 
we can get a lot of kids players, and they wait around till somebody calls. And then we send them out to play, and we can charge so much each player. Why, say that's tremendous! Talk to kids, sir. Well, why, Mr. Jackson? Well, of course, this is colossal. But if you Americans say, what will you use for money? You take advertising and office, you need money. Oh, money. How do you talk of money when I've got an idea like this? You'll make money hand over heels. Yes, but it takes money to start this business to advertise it. It's good. All right, you keep spoiling everything. Let's start it first and then worry about the money. Now, uh, wait just a minute, PC. Uh, would you consider a third partner? Mars, you? A partner with capital? Marge, with a capital M. I've got a little money set aside, and I've been quietly thinking of going into something of my own. I don't want to work for somebody else the rest of my life. How about it? The three of us. The three of us to Of course. Are you sure you want to spend your money, Marge? Well, of course. This is just what I want. Why, well, it's a great idea. Then you're a lifesaver. Marge, you're a man. <laughs> With your money and my ideas, we'll be sitting on Teddy's feet. Oh, 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 yes, yes, yes. Teddy, I'm guilty. That's just not bad. Like this, like this. Oh, 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 oh. It really does seem as if Jane struck a great idea. We learn more about the details when next we meet Easy Eight.